Paul quoted an incident from Genesis chapter 21 that is a total fabrication which David Wood will now have to explain. In Galatians chapter 4, verse number 40, Paul quotes the incident where Ishmael allegedly mocked Isaac and Sarah then ordered Abraham to cast Ishmael and his mother out. But Muslims know for a fact this did not happen. According to Islam, Ishmael was a baby when he was sent to Arabia, which means he left before Isaac was even born. It's narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu The first lady to use a girdle was the mother of Ishmael. She used the girdle so that she might hide her tracks from Sarah. Abraham brought her and her son Ishmael while she was suckling him. Notice while she was suckling him, he was a baby. This is in Buhari, volume 4, book 55, uh, hadith number 583. Now, according to Genesis, Ishmael was at least 40, 14 years older than Isaac. And by the time Isaac was weaned, which would have taken approximately three years, Ishmael would have been 17. But in Genesis chapter 21, verse number 14, it clearly shows Ishmael is a baby who is being carried by his mother to, Ab uh, to Arabia. Let me quote the relevant, pa uh, uh, relevant passage. Early the next morning, Abraham gave Hagar an animal skin full of water and some bread. Then he put the boy on her shoulder and sent her away. He put the 17-year-old boy on Hagar's shoulder to carry to Arabia and sent her away. Notice not sent them away, her, because Ishmael was a baby. So I want David to explain that Ishmael, if Ishmael was a baby when he went to Arabia, <coughs> like Islam confirms, then how can the story of him mocking Isaac be true? So you have a contradiction. Either Ishmael was 17 and he was cast out by Sarah, or he was a baby who went to Arabia before Isaac was born. This shows why the biblical account cannot be trusted. It says that Paul uh, has, has misquoted uh, a story or something that, that, that shows that the story is false in Genesis chapter 21 because Ishmael uh, is a baby. Um, let's go ahead and, and read it. This will be the uh, New American Standard Bible um, along with the ESV, certainly the uh, most literal translations. Genesis 21. Uh, begin at verse 12. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the lad and your maid. Whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her, for through Isaac your descendants shall be named. Notice that. This is the passage that... Um, that Zachar is quoting to us, and it's through Isaac your descendants shall be named. And of the son of the maid, I will make a nation also, because he is your descendant. So, same thing we find in the rest of this general passage. Covenants, especially your descendants are going to be named through Isaac, but I'm also going to bless Ishmael. Um, so Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar, putting them on her shoulder and gave her the boy and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. Uh, gave bread and wine, a skin of bread, skin, skin of water, and gave them bread and a skin of water, gave them to Hagar, putting them on her shoulder, and gave her the boy and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. Um, nothing clear here about carrying a, a baby slash 17 year old on her shoulder. Zucker says, I have to respond to the biblical problems or we just can't trust the Bible. Uh, is that the method tonight? He can point out a couple problems with the Bible. If he finds a problem, if I weren't to respond to it, then we have to reject it all. We can't take any of it seriously. Is that the method? Because I really believe I could quote a few problems with the Quran and then say, therefore, we can't trust anything, any Muslim view, any Muslim claim at all, uh, until he resolves these problems. I think I could quote a lot of problems really quickly. And uh, Zakir, if you'd like to challenge me on that, uh, I invite you to. Mm -hmm. 
I want to come back to the contradiction. What I said is, if you're going to quote passages regarding the story of Ishmael and Isaac, you have to explain the contradictions in the story. There's no point quoting alleged contradictions in the Quran. I didn't bring out all, any contradictions like was Ahaz 42 or 40, um, 22. I brought it to do with the story. Let me read the text again. So Abraham awoke early in the morning, took bread and a skin of water, and gave them to Hagar. He placed them on her shoulder, along with a boy. Moreover, this ain't just in the translation, this is in the original Hebrew, because according to the Jewish study Bible, Rashi, the classical Jewish commentary, he tried to harmonize this, but his harmonization was ridiculous. This is what the Jewish study Bible mentions about this contradiction. The narrator presupposes a child small enough to be carried by his mother, but since Ishmael was 13 before Isaac was conceived, and Isaac's weaning, which likely occurred at three, has already taken place, Ishmael is at least 16. So folks, one minute Ishmael is either 16 or 17, and he mocks Isaac and gets sent to Arabia, the next minute he's a baby being carried to Arabia. Which one was it? If he had been sent to Arabia as a baby, as Islam confirms, that shows the mocking story is a fabrication, and Genesis is very good with fabrications. So for you to point to Genesis will not be good as long as you can answer this contradiction. So please don't try to be around the bush with it. And the translations I've given are accurate on the shoulder. I've got commentaries, I can give you more commentaries if you like. And Rashi, a classical Jewish commentator, tried to harmonize it, but it was actually ridiculous. Nothing clear here about carrying a, a baby slash 17 year old on her shoulder. Very strange. Serious? He says, I, he continues to say, I can't quote the Bible until I resolve the difficulties. The point was absolutely well made about the inconsistency. Zakar quotes the Bible over and over and over and over again. Any point, any point in there that he can get to agree with them, even if it's massive stretches of interpretation, uh, we are supposed to take uh, at face value as some kind of uh, establishment of Islam and the prophethood of Muhammad, every verse that disagrees with the Islamic position, obviously, obviously corrupt, can't trust that, can't, uh, uh, just can't trust the Bible, and uh, I can't quote anything in the Bible. Um, total inconsistency, total inconsistency, and think uh, about that method, if, if that's the method, you could, you could prove anything to anyone, I could go to any book, anyone's scriptures, open them up and say, uh, hey, everything I agree with, that's good scripture. All these other things that I don't agree with, you've got a problem, you can't quote it to me. Um, very strange.
folks. I'm very, very disappointed tonight. I'm very, very disappointed tonight. I asked him again and again, was Ishmael 17 who mocked Isaac and was sent to Arabia? Or was he a baby being carried to Arabia? Which means he went to Arabia before Isaac was born. Hence, Genesis has a fabricated story in it, which Paul quoted. Paul quoted a fabricated story. So if you got this in your Bible, then you're quoting from a forged document. He says, I'm quoting from his Bible and I'm making my case. But the point is, if I'm quoting from your Bible and making a case, your job is to refute it. Your Bible is not my book. I'm quoting your Bible against you, same way you quote our Quran against us. He tried to say the contradiction of Ishmael's age is not there. But I quoted Rashi, I quoted the Jewish study Bible, who mentioned that the original Hebrews got this contradiction. It's no secret, but these apologists are experienced, you see. When they can't answer the question, they're silent on it. Or they're spinning, spinning around. But people who watch this on YouTube are going to know you avoiding my questions. So folks, people who watch this on YouTube and see this debate, they will know he avoided most of my questions. So the covenant was with Ishmael and Isaac. We love them both. They were both prophets. It's not Ishmael or Isaac or Jesus or Muhammad. Truth stands out from error. Assalamu alaikum. We'd like to have more broadcasts, more shows, more programs, and uh, we can only do that uh, through financial donations. And so I encourage everyone out there uh, to contribute. We have families and children and bills to pay and writing entire books means we'd have to set aside other projects for a while, which in turn means that we'd starve and get kicked out of our apartments for not paying the rent. That's why we're turning to you for help. We are asking our viewers and readers to chip in for a couple of months if we can scrape together enough funds to pay the bills while we work on two or three books. Sam and I are going to sit down and focus on writing some brutal critiques of Muhammad and Islam. ربنا إني أسكنت من ذريتي بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون الحمد لله الذي وهب لي على الكبر إسماعيل وإسحاق إن ربي لسميع الدعاء أشهده والله إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله